Hi, I'm Lisa Van. I'm a salon owner, editorial artist, and global educator around the world. One of the things I'm really excited to show you today in this series is some great tips and tricks that I've learned over the last 39 years of doing hair. So today we're going to be going over styling and finishing. So let's get started. So how do we begin? For me, the beginning is being inspired. And one of the things that has inspired me over the years is Fashion Weeks. I've been lucky enough to get to go and work at different Fashion Weeks over the last 15 years. So how do we look at fashion in relation to hair and makeup? One of the things that I look at is what is the trends? What's going on? Is it volume in the gowns? Is it sleek? Is it a certain color selection? Is it a certain pattern selection? So once I've decided when it comes down to what is inspiring in the season, then I go in to look at hair inspiration. So with fashion in our textile industry, it really kind of guides us and leads us to what's going on in hair and makeup fashion. Because without clothing fashion, you kind of get messed up when it comes to not having the same complement to what's going on when it comes to hair and makeup or when it comes to going on to the garment that the guests are wearing. So you have to remember that our textile industry really leads us into what's going on in our fashion and hair world. So taking a look at some of the fashion trends is really important to me and then moving into kind of narrowing them down to what looks I like that will complement my guests within my salon, that will excite my team within my salon or actually excite the clients that I'm working with. So with that being said, I start storyboarding and putting things together for myself that then I can introduce to my guest or to the client that I'm working with of what's relevant and what's coming. Now the trick is, in fashion, they're usually looking at the textile a year ahead. So that gives you a great point of difference than anyone else because then you're able to start setting the trends. So some of the trends that I look for, especially when styling and finishing, is, is the hair being up? Is it half up, half down? Is it all the way up? Is it a sleek look? Is it a wet look? Is it a matte look? So with that being said, I start breaking down different techniques that I can do as far as teaching when it comes to setting and prepping and getting the hair ready for these looks that I want to introduce to whatever job that I'm taking. Some of the things that I'm noticing is color is a great reference in the fabric. And are we complementing the color or are we neutralizing what's going on with the colors of the fabric? Sometimes you want to enhance by working with an opposite tone or sometimes you want to go with a monochromatic tone. So that's really important as well. Next, you want to look at length. There's different lengths that are going on in hair all the time. And so with that being said, you can look at cutting hair shorter or leaving hair longer. When leaving hair longer, you start looking at texture. So is the texture wavy? Is it curly? Is it soft? Is it fuzzy? So when it comes to the texture of the hair, that's another important element. So with all that being said, you're able to establish inspiration not only from the textile, fashion, but also what's going on with some of the looks for hair and makeup that you can incorporate in your day in and day out routine. One of the things that I'm very focused on is sanitation when I'm out working, especially globally. Being a global educator, I go into different territories around the world and different areas require different types of sanitation. Before we bring our model out, Alexis, I'm gonna actually put on my face mask. I use different ones. A lot of times when I use a different model, I will change my mask and apron out before my next model comes in. And then I'm going to properly sanitize my hands. And also to note, all my tools are sanitized in between model usage and actually in the salon as well, we sanitize all our tools after every guest. So let's get started and have Aspen bring in our first model. Now I'd like to have Aspen bring in our model, Alexis. I'd love for Aspen to introduce herself. She's been working with us in these series and you're hoping to see her in future videos. Hi, my name is Aspen. I'm a stylist of seven years, um, editorial stylist and educator. 
I started the industry because I love the artistic aspect of it. So the editorial part of um, our industry is personally my favorite. I'm really excited to be part of this and I hope to see you guys in other videos here soon. Great, so what I wanna do is actually now kind of take over where we left off. So I chose you some really great ways of how you can create texture in the hair, how you can smooth out texture depending on the density and the type of hair you're working with. Now I wanna show you the way we Aspen spent prepping Alexa's hair and how I would prep her hair prior to curling it. So the first thing that I would do is work with a thermal spray to actually make sure the hair is going to be protected from any type of it's that, any type of heat that I'm using on it. Um, Alexis has highlights in her hair, so it's really important to use a proper heat protectant whenever you're adding any kind of heated tool, and that can even mean blow dryer. So with my blow dryer, I'm gonna go in with a Denman brush to really smooth the hair out so the cuticle's all going in the right direction for when I go in to curl the hair. So even if your guest has smooth hair, it's still really important to smooth out the hair, prep the hair, get the cuticle laid down, and actually go in with a blow dryer nozzle. I'm going to use a very thin concentrator to make sure the heat is all directional, all going in the same direction. When I am flat wrapping out her hair, working the heat protectant through. I'm creating X's on the hair so I can make sure the tension and it's extremely directional when I'm working with brushing the product through the hair. You can see that I got the base very flat by creating that X and using my brush to create the smoothness at her base. And then just using my nozzle, I just went through and made sure that the cuticle was laying flat. Now we're gonna go through with a three quarter inch section like we talked about in the last segment in how we prep the hair. And I'm going to use a three quarter inch by three quarter inch and I'll have you hold that up. <clears throat> You're going to also hold, hand me pins as well. So three quarter inch by three quarter inch subsections. Now if the hair is resistant and dense, I'm going to spray each section as I go. So now I have this whole section that I'm gonna spray. If it is coarser textured hair, I'll spray each segment as I work through. So medium hair, I'm gonna go through each segment. For finer textured hair, you're gonna go through the whole section. And for coarser resistant hair, each segment as you go. You're gonna work your iron through to smooth the cuticle as well. And then you'll go through and you will curl all the way up to the scalp. And I'm gonna have Aspen hand me the clip. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna clip these sections in. Smoothing the hair through, curling the hair up. And you're gonna click your Marcel iron all the way through so that the ends of the hair are evenly curled as well. And then we'll go through and then section our necks. Again, we're gonna do three quarter inch subsections. Put this up, put this in half and go through and spray each section as we go. 
When you spray, make sure you're evenly combing the product through so with the hair. And then again, everything with Alexis's set is all done directional because we're going to creating a style with wave and no volume. And as you can see, we are using a three quarter inch iron. So we are going to have one half inch, one and one half inch wave pattern. So you're gonna double the size of your iron and your sections to get the result that you want in your end result. So let's clip this up, clip. Next section. And because of the texture of her hair and that she has porosity and also highlights, we're making sure that we're protecting the hair as we move through it. And our iron is set at about 325. If the hair were to be sticking to my iron, I would turn the iron down 20 degrees. If I wasn't getting the end result curl that I wanted, I would go up 20 degrees. When you get up to the parietal ridge and where you're wanting more volume, you simply are gonna put your comb under that section so you can get it tight at the scalp. And don't let these little fish hook ends slip away from you. You can simply go through with your iron and just refine them all the way up, clip the hair. It's important to clip the hair when the hair is hot and not to stretch it out. And what I mean by that, if I'm going through, I'm gonna get this little section here, and I'm smoothing out the hair, and you can see these little pieces around her face, you're really gonna to wanna to go through and smooth out that section if I'm curling the hair and I'm dragging this section down like this, I'm gonna get a whole different type of curl. So what you wanna do is make sure you're parallel to your section and you're wrapping right on base. And when you're working in the salon, it's generally really important to have your comb with you, especially when you're working around the face. So you can actually place the iron right on base and move it against your comb. What's equally important is to have a comb that's heat resistant so you don't melt your comb. So tools are such a big factor when doing styling because it's the littlest things like melting a comb or not having the proper brush to smooth out the hair evenly, or having the proper blow dryer with the right nozzle to smooth the hair out properly. So there's so many factors when styling hair with proper tools giving you a better result than what you would get if you didn't have them. So we're gonna go through, smooth out my section. I'm using two hands because and I know they teach you to use one hand in school, but she's a little high. And so I'm like, I am this, in this area of, I don't want to burn her. I know the students that go, that are in beauty school going, oh my gosh, she's using two hands because a lot of times they call me out on that. <laughs> Safety is the most important thing. So yes, in the salon, when you have a little, more room to bring the client down a little bit, but when you're filming, sometimes you might need that extra hand to just keep, keep Alexa safe from a big scar on her forehead. So, so yes, I, um, I do realize what I'm doing a little bit differently than what you were taught. So again, sometimes you have to make adjustments to go with what, how you're working. And also, I think it's important too, when you're working, especially in a fashion week scenario or in a 
photo shoot, time, time costs money. So if you're not able to marcel a head of hair, and Alexis has a lot of hair, so 15 to 30 minutes, you need to practice. I mean, when I go do a job, and I know that we're gonna be doing a lot of curl and a lot of texture, I spend a couple hours a night practicing my sets and just sitting there mannequin, like practicing on a mannequin head over and over again to get the look. So now when the curls are cooled, we're gonna go through and take out the set. If I'm doing a wedding party and I'm setting the hair, generally what I'll do is I will set the bride first, go do the bridesmaids, and then come back to the bride when it's time to style the hair. If I'm doing a photo shoot or any type of collection of models, I generally get all of the models set first and then go back through and start the styling. Because we're working with one model today, we're able to then get her hair set and now go through and take out her set once it's cooled. So if you have one client that you're doing, let's say a wedding style on or a juvenile event like a prom or a homecoming or something that is that day and you have one guest or one model, the most important thing after you set the hair is don't take it out until all the curls are cooled down. So we're gonna go through here. It's important to just make sure that you get all the pins out. So even coming through the hair and just feeling and making sure all the pins are out is important. We're almost there. Again, this was set with a three quarter inch iron with three quarter inch by three quarter inch subsections, all directional in the same direction. So we're able to create the wave that's gonna be one and a half inch wave pattern with no volume. We worked off the part. So you can see here even when we got to that top horseshoe section, it was still wrapped directional towards the face. So this is away from the face. This is coming towards the face. If we wanted volume, we would then alternate each row. And if we wanted lots of volume and curl, we would collision each section. Okay, so now we're gonna brush her out. Thanks, Aspen. Thank you. You'll see Aspen a little bit later. So I'm gonna start brushing out this set. Now I like to use a boar bristle brush or a Mason Pearson brush when brushing through the hair. What's really important about when you're using a boar bristle brush or a tight bound brush, you're gonna get a lot of loose hair kind of coming into the brush. A lot of times when you're looking at the hair that's really coming, when you're combing out the hair and it's getting a bit static and it's kind of frizzing out a little bit, it's not generally because of the set or the product. It's more about the hair in the brush. So when I'm brushing out a set, I clean my brush six, seven times throughout the brushing because when you have hair that's caught up in your brush and brushing through the hair, if there's a lot of hair you're gonna create static. So if there's a lot of hair in your brush, you're gonna create static when you're brushing through the hair. So I generally, as an all purpose rule, is each quadrant I go through, I'm brushing through you know, 10 to 12 times in each section, and then I'm gonna clean my brush. You wanna keep cleaning out your brush throughout your comb out, so that way you're not gonna get static or all this frizzy hair, creating this static in your brush and what's on her hair. So that's gonna be your number one tip when you're brushing out the hair. 
I'm gonna just move over to this side. So you can see if I'm brushing through the hair and I'm not cleaning out the brush, the hair can get very frizzy and all the little hairs start standing on end. But once you start cleaning out the brush, you can get all that hair to lay smooth. I'm gonna go through the back. and continue brushing all the hair out. Okay. So now we're gonna go through with a finishing serum. So this is kind of a trick as well, is a lot of stylists love to go to a hairspray. And what happens with a hairspray is a hairspray that's intended to hold the shape gets a bit stiff or sticky when working at this prepping point. So now I'm gonna go in with a styling serum and I'm gonna go through I'm gonna use about eight pumps and go through and start separating out the curl to how I wanna see it. So I'm gonna actually just request Aspen to get me a towel just so I have it here handy. And I'm gonna start in the back. So I'm gonna spin you around a little bit. And I'm simply gonna go through and just piece out, definitely from roots to ends. Thank you, Aspen. I'm just gonna have that there for me as needed. And piece out each section of the curl that I wanna see. So I wanna create these one and a half inch curl patterns, even though I did a three quarter inch by three quarter inch set, I'm gonna now go through and create my style by picking up one and a half inch sections and working my smoothing serum from roots to ends. So here's my section. So I'm gonna do one and a half by one and a half. And I'm gonna work that all the way roots to ends. This is where you see on any kind of bridal set or real finish where you see a lot of the shine in the hair. It comes from using a finished product, not a holding product. So we're gonna go through and make sure we're working that from roots to ends, all the way through, come over to the side, again we're going to go through here, roots to ends, I'm just going to dust off some of the hair. And then again, working the serum all the way through. Let me grab a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna show you side to side with this. So now I have the serum work through on one side and not on the other. When I go to dress this hair now, you have that really pretty one and a half inch wave pattern and it moves all the way through the hair 
And this could be a really beautiful down style on its own. And if I wanted to just create this really pretty kind of down style with this wave, I could spray it, have a nice hold here. What's different is when you look at it on this side, you don't get near amount of shine, you don't get near amount of control. And it is so important to work with a finished product versus a hold product during this stage of your style. So we're gonna go through and finish the other side with our serum. I'm gonna come on over here. And again, I'm picking up one and one half inch. I'm working that serum roots to ends. And I'm gonna make sure I'm going through every bit of the hair. So you wanna make sure everything is touched roots to ends as you move through. And I've used now, I would say about 20 pumps of serum. And with that, I'm able to get all the hair ready for whatever set or whatever style I wanna finish with, with this set. If I wanted to leave her hair down, at this point, I could brush it through, create the waves and then spray it. If I wanna pull it up, it's prepped for whatever style I wanna pull it into. So I wanna finish working all this through the back. And then I'm gonna go in. And again, with these style brushes as well, you wanna make sure you're cleaning all the hair out of them. I'm gonna brush the waves in place. If you have the right set, you should never be worried about combing it out and losing your curl. I think a lot of stylists tend to go to hairspray, thinking that's gonna help keep their curl in place. But what happens is it's too sticky, it's too heavy, and you lose your, your style. So I'm gonna go through, and I'm gonna just take each section, and I'm gonna just back comb the ends just to hold that one and a half inch wave in place. And then I'm gonna take a flat duck bill and just kind of push my wave in. And then again in the back, in this back quadrant, I'm just gonna take my style brush, push my wave up in place. Same in the back two quadrants. And then moving back over to the side. And then clipping. And then now is when I would take my hairspray and just hold this down style in place. It's hard to see, I don't have a mirror, but I'm, I'm guessing it's falling right into place because it looked like Aspen did a great job on the set. Okay. Once everything is where you like it, then you can finish with a gloss. I think one of the things that I like about creating really nice ridges 
in a style is then you can create the shine that you want to see into it as well. And because she has such a great set, it allows her to have this wearability of this style throughout the night. And if she wakes up, it should still be there the next day. So, there is our first finished look from our prep and our set and our style. So I want to go in quickly with this particular set and give you another look that you can also achieve with this, this set. So before I brush it through, you can see that it's about one and a half inch wave pattern. It's flat with no volume. And now we're gonna take it to another step. So we're gonna take it into more of a mock bob. So you're gonna go through again and you'll just brush out all of your product that you just put in. Just kind of make sure it's all brushed through really well. And this is what she would look like the next day. Like she could just brush it out and just have these really pretty waves continuing, continuing until she washes her hair. We're gonna go back in with our serum. And you wanna make sure when you're working with any type of style product, you wanna work the product on the backs and fronts of the hand. So when you go through, you can just refine your curl and you're not getting whatever you put right in the middle of your palm going right into that first curl around the face. So we're gonna go through and smooth our curls out again. So now we're gonna go a little bit bigger with our sections, about two inch by two inch, because we're gonna do another look. So we're just refinding our set with our style product. We're gonna go through again, roots to ends all the way around the hair, all the way around the head, making sure all the hair is saturated with our styling product. And this is a styling serum. So what this does is it smooths down the flyaways. It actually redefines your curl and allows the hair to be more workable during the styling process. You're spinning. So you just wanna make sure you work this through every bit of the hair from roots to ends. This is not one of those products that you can just rub it in your hands and scratch it on the ends. That's not how it works. You really have to go through, depending on the style that you created or the, the style that you want to create and the set that you wanted, that you, would, you did on your model or your guest, that's how you're going to decide how big a sections I want to take for this next look, which will be more of a mock bob. So once you work your style product all the way through the hair, you're gonna take each curl and you're just gonna push them into kind of a mock bob. So whatever length you want to achieve, you're gonna push it up to your desired length. Now you're not ratting it up, you're just simply kind of creating this billowy curl effect. So you're picking up each one of the curls and just kind of holding the end of the hair and pushing it up. I kind of like the flyaways. And what I find is 
a lot of the girls that I work with that are younger, they love the idea of kind of having this shorter look, but still having these tendrils that make their hair still feel long. So we're just gonna push the curls up and work all the way around the head. And we're just creating this kind of billowy soft texture. Because we wrapped off base, or excuse me, because we wrapped no volume and the curls fall off base, we're not gonna get a lot of volume above the parietal ridge because this is gonna be kind of a wave, no volume look. So you're just gonna go through and make sure you're pushing up every one of the curls. As we move around from quadrant to quadrant. And it is, it's a very holding the last inch of the hair, pushing the curl up into this billowy style and just moving around the head. So you're creating this kind of bob effect. Now, when you're deciding where you want the curl to go, meaning where it's starting on the head, I'm kind of looking right about at her eye. Because if I wanted it higher, I'd over the direct the hair higher because I want to keep it into more of a bob shape, I'm under directing it off the part and I'm just pushing it slightly into place. So I'm going to keep moving this through. And because I have that style product and it still gives me really soft texture without having a lot of frizz and I still have a lot of shine and I think what's really important about working with texture in hair you want to keep it shiny because if it gets dull meaning if I were to just go in and have used hairspray it would have been very matte and when it's very matte it can get dry looking and not healthy. So using your shinier products allow you to have more reflection and working with texture then allows you to have healthier looking curls. So now I'm gonna go through with my hairspray and I'm gonna just shape this bob. So once I go there, now I'm gonna take my blow dryer on, high, on medium heat and low speed and I'm gonna just shape it. Okay. So this actually can get, I mean, I did this style for London Fashion Week last year or a year and a half ago. It can be a little much for the everyday girl going out. So what I like to do then is you can take some elastics 
A, a lot of times we're geared to going to hairpins and bobby pins and kind of collapsing things down. But you can just go and take some elastics and just kind of collapse it down a little bit and kind of create another shape. There we go. And then just kind of push your style in. And kind of tuck. And this one I've seen, like, especially for like red carpet events. Um, Nicole Kidman wore this, I think, at one of the events. I've seen different, different ways of um, utilizing these bands to just kind of create a new shape, kind of giving it kind of a retro look. So there we go. So there's a couple of options with this no volume wave style that are super easy to do. And we're gonna kind of continue with this with a few more looks, so stay tuned. So as you can see with Alexis's hair, we didn't have to recurl her. We could just brush her out. Again, we were working with a boar bristle brush and keeping it clean and making sure there's no hair in the brush when you're brushing through it. So what we're gonna do now is kind of play off a show I did a few years back for Christian Seriano at Fashion Week. And this was something that we actually incorporated back into the salon pretty easily. When you're working with different designers, I think what's interesting is you're really inspired by their, their mood boards. So you're not really looking at hair pictures that they want to see. You're looking more at the inspiration for the show. His inspiration for the show that we styled was waves. He loved water. He loved how the waves broke. And so it was our job as a stylist to really come up with a story that really fit his mood of his show. He had these beautiful big ball gowns and garments and everything was in aquas and blues. And so Antoinette Beenders was a stylist that I was lucky to work under as a lead of the show. And so what allowed us to do then was create a look that really, really felt like it fit what he wanted to portray on the runway. So we're gonna start off with making sure that we section off at the Pridal Ridge and we're gonna do kind of a mohawk section. Now with this look, this is kind of a wet and matte look. I think that's what is kind of a new story. We're starting to see hair that has dual textures going on. So we're gonna work with a wet finish and a matte finish. So I'm gonna start off with a mohawk section and I'll have Aspen grab a clip. And I'm just gonna go through. And what you don't wanna do at this time is take this beautiful hair that you set and you know we have product in it because we already added a bunch of hairspray and gloss finish and prep product. So you want to really keep it in its set. Will you add me a smooth clip? Yeah. Thanks. And you want to make sure you just roll it up and clip it in its roll. What you don't want to do when you have a proper set in the hair is twist the hair and kind of bunch it up. Because what that can do is put creases in the hair and then you're fighting those creases throughout your whole um, style. So I'm gonna go in with a liquid pomade and I usually put it in a bowl and use a color brush applicator because um, having a wet matte finish style, you wanna make sure that you're not working the product all the way through the ends. And by using a color brush and bowl, you can apply the product right where you want it to go. So I'm gonna have Aspen hold this for me. So I'm gonna go through and apply this liquid pomade like a color touch-up. So I'm just gonna apply it out 
one inch, almost like I'm just doing a color retouch and just work it at the new growth. And I'm making sure that everything is covered at the new growth. The thing that I love about showing a new technique of styling hair is that when you're working with stylists and they're really excited about doing hair in the salon, what's the point of difference? If you're introducing a new technique to a guest, most likely they're not going to go home and start painting on their pomade at their roots one inch out to get their style. They need to come to you to get the style. So what's nice about creating some up styles and techniques that are kind of fun for you as a stylist, but also something that the guests can't necessarily do at home. And when they want to have that special occasion up style that they would book you or have you come in to a, a photo shoot or book you in your salon for this technique or this style that they want to achieve. I had a guest that came in with a ponytail picture. And sometimes you think, oh, it's just a ponytail. And that's kind of what she thought. She thought, oh, it's just a ponytail. I can do that at home. But she tried and tried and tried to do it at home. And she could not get the same ponytail look that was in one of the fashion magazines. And when she brought the picture in and showed me, I was like, oh, I, I know how to do that. I'll do that for you. And I started painting on the product. And then I had back combed and ironed the top. And then I did the ponytail in two different sections. And she was like, oh, no wonder, because it, it seemed like more of an effort for her to do it. And so many times over the years now, she's come in to have me do that style. Being a simple ponytail, there was something really special about what it looked like. And that's what happens when you're working with different designers, is that you really come up with a new way of doing something that makes this look special. And by going in and painting the product on, and you can use any type of pomade that you want to paint on to create that wet look at the roots. So when you go through and you're painting on your product, you wanna be very generous with the, the product that you're putting on. So you can see that I got it where you can actually see it on the hair. You're gonna go through now and you're gonna start combing the hair straight back. And I'm stopping right where I want the wet to be, because I still want this to have a matte look and I want this to have a wet look. So I'm stopping right where I want the wet look to finish. And you can flip your comb if you need to comb out the ends, but you can see I have a very wet finished look here on the side. And then we're gonna do the opposite side the same way. So I'm just gonna go over here. And I'm gonna have Aspen come right over here. Will you just, I keep grabbing this, will you just hold that mm -hmm. for me? So we're gonna just move this product through, making sure that it's nice and smooth. Thank you. And then make sure you get the nape. Once everything is directed in towards the back, you're gonna take the back of your comb and just make sure you don't have any product that's just sitting on the hair where you see the cream. And this is another thing that, I mean, I used half a tube of the pomade 
So it's the thing about, again, when you really want to see that reflection and you really want to see that sleekness, you do have to use a little bit of product there. So I'm going to come in now and I'm going to take a small elastic. It's going to open. And I'm going to have Aspen. So the, the one thing that they were really um, definitely wanting to see with this look was that the sides were going straight back. So if I were to hold it in a ponytail, it kind of dips down. So what I'm going to do is have Aspen grab the front and hold it like this facing us. So I'm going to slick this. I'm going to grab this side, bring it straight back, have you push it back, and then same on this side. So what's going to happen is she's going to hold these sides straight back for me. And I'm going to come in and ponytail this. Sometimes it's in the detail. When we did this show, they really wanted these sides to go straight back. And if you don't have somebody sometimes to help you with that, and you get that dip where it's coming down instead of back, then it kind of throws off the style. And again, you want to make sure that you're giving them the result and the style that they want. OK, I'm going to have you let go. And you can kind of see now how that comes straight back. And I think we got both sides and the edges. OK. Now we're going to go back to the top. So I'm going to take out my top and I'm going to have, I'm going to grab a towel because I have product on my hands. Mm -hmm. The other thing is you want to make sure that once you work with all that product and now you come into the top, you don't want to have any of that product through the top because this is going to be your matte look. So not going to have a lot of reflection of shine. It's going to be a little bit more matte. And I'm simply going to go through and section. And I'm going to have Aspen, as I back comb, I'm going to spray the section. And I'm going to have you take the flat iron and just flat iron where the back comb is. So I hit it with a heat protectant, and I'm gonna have her just tap just where the back comb is. Tap it a little bit and let me feel it. Just wanna make sure it's heated all the way through. I'm gonna take my next section. So about one half inch sections, I'm gonna back comb. And I'm gonna spray it with the heat protectant and have you back comb just, or flat iron just where the back comb is. Okay. So this was a tip I was showing you earlier that by flat ironing and back combing, it gives you a little bit more texture. And I'm back combing to the about the area, go a little bit lower, of where, back combing up to the area of how much volume I want to see in the height of this look. The other thing is I'm spraying the front and the back of this section with a heat protectant. And this will protect the hair up to 425 degrees of heat that you're using with an iron. It is a little bit wetter of a spray. Do it a little pretty, a little bit wetter of a spray. So you can give it a minute to dry or just go ahead and, and use your iron right over it. It dissipates. So it dries pretty fast in the hair. Okay. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go through and just hit them all again. I had Aspen help me because when you back comb and if you flat iron it after the fact, sometimes it kind of gets kind of locked together. So it's a little harder to find your sections if you're not back combing and flat iron as you go. You definitely could back comb the whole top into these one inch sections if you wanted to and go back and find them, but it's just easier to have help. If you have the opportunity to have somebody help you, and what I like about it, it gives that next generation stylist an opportunity to work with you and kind of learn from you and kind of take this on themselves eventually. Okay, so we're gonna go through and now we brush it out. So once it's cooled down, you're just gonna brush out the back comb. And then make sure you're cleaning your brush as you work through. This way. Her hair is so long, I'm hitting the mic. <laughs> I'm just gonna brush it up this way. And then we're gonna grab some of our hairspray. And just kinda lift the ends up. Another thing in this particular look where it's like so airy, you can start kind of forming the front on how high you want it to be. And I'm gonna use a little bit of texture powder that kind of gives it a little bit more of a matte look as well. You just kind of scrunch that in. So a texture powder works really well or a dry hairspray, anything that kind of dulls the color, takes away the shine and kind of mats it up. Now we're gonna go through, and I'll have you hand me bobby pins. So we're gonna go through, and I'm gonna take that whole top section and gather it. And I'm just gonna push all of this up and pin it in place. So with your bobby pins, the flat part of the bobby pin goes towards the head and the grip actually grabs the hair. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna weave the bobby pin through the section of the hair and then I'm gonna push it into the base of my ponytail. I'm gonna take the other side, the flat part, weave it through the hair, and then crisscross it with my bobby pin. The one thing about bobby pins, when you open them, they should snap back. If they stay open, then you need better bobby pins because they really should grip the hair. Because of the set and the prep and how we did her texture, you shouldn't need more than a few bobby pins for this part. Now we're gonna go to the bottom section, holding this together, pushing it up, and then we're gonna twist it up into our last section, and again, your bobby pin should be the flat part of your pin should grip or go flat to the head and then your 
part that's a little bit rigid should go in to where the hair grabs. Okay, there we go. So a lot of times after I finish it up style, I'll go in and just refine it with a little bit of hairspray. And if I want to create any type of additional waves, I like to use the blow dryer. Get the hair off of her. And this kind of gives you that flat texture, matte texture, and then a gloss texture. And if you even want it glossier, you could go in with a spray gloss and just really shine up the wet part. So there we are. I'm going to now have um, Hannah come in. So a lot of times if we do a style in the salon, we often have our makeup artists come in and just retouch the makeup.